Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Those of you here, those who are watching online, we want to welcome you to our service today. And I want you to know that the Lord is good Amen. and his mercy endures forever. Welcome to Christ Life Spring Fellowship. Our class is Pastor David Jawa here. Our service is worship service Sunday at 10 a.m. The other services we bring you update later. Our contact is David Jawa here at rogers.com and our phone number is 416-567-5794. I'm reading from Psalms 138 from verse 2. I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and for your truth and faithfulness. For you have exalted above all else your name and your word and you have magnified your word above all your name. Mark chapter 11, 22. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. Then said the Lord to me, You have seen well, for I am a Lord and active, watching over my word to perform it. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We give you glory and honor for today. We dedicate the service into your hands. We liberate the atmosphere. We come against every work of Satan and everything, oh God, that's trying to seek to disrupt the service. We come against the works of the adversary in Jesus' name and let your Holy Spirit take control. And not your servant as he bring forth your word, oh God. Let your word will go forth with the authority and the power that's been given, oh God. Minister to soul, minister to lives, oh God, minister to those in need. We thank you for this day, oh God, and we commit everything into your hands. You take the praise, the glory, and the honor. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day, in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, I turn over to my husband, Pastor David Jawa here. Uh, praise the Lord, and God is good. God is wonderful. And I do trust the Lord that you are listening to the service. If perchance you are not getting it now, you be certain that it will be aired on sometime during the day. Right now, I believe that there is some internet problem. Right, Elin? Yeah. So, there are some internet problem, but the live program will come to you on recording later this day. And you will get to hear and see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to welcome all of you to service today and in the house of God. I want to welcome all of the Facebook listeners and all the YouTube listeners. I want to tell you the Spirit of God is moving. Say that with me. The Spirit of God is moving. And right now, the Spirit of God is moving into your life. The Spirit of God is moving within you. The Spirit of God is doing a work within your life. And how is he 
doing that work. He's doing that work by the word of God. Say that. By the word of God. So the Spirit of God works with the word. The word going to come into you and going to bring life. I'm going to bring the spirit within you so that you can believe God and trust God and you will see the word at work within you. So today I would like to continue on my general topic, faith. But today's message is based on faith, but the integrity of the Word of God. Say that. The integrity of the Word of God. Without the Word of God, your faith is hopeless. Without the word of God, your faith is hopeless. So today we would like to look on the integrity of the word of God. Hallelujah. The first question that will come to you, what is integrity? What is integrity? Integrity is a concept of consistency. Hallelujah. So we can say that the word of God has consistency. Consistency of actions, values, Methods, measure, principles, expectation, and outcome. So when you look at the Word of God, you will find the Word is active. Say active. active. The Word is active within you. The Word has Values. You live by values. You, you show me your values and I will tell you who you are and what you are. The Word of God has a method, a measure, a principle, an expectation, and the Word of God will have an outcome. The outcome is your salvation, is your deliverance, is your hope. It can be regarded as the opposite of hypocrisy. So the word of God is not in any way hypocrisy, but full of action, full of values, full of the measure and principles and expectation and outcome of God in your life. Hallelujah. When I think of integrity, I think of righteousness. Hallelujah. Righteousness. Before, I was an unrighteous person. But in Christ, he is my righteousness. He is the word of God. Hallelujah. When I think of the word of God, I think of it being honorable. The word of God is honorable. The word of God is soundness. Do you have 
soundness as a characteristic in your life. Well, if you have the Word of God in you and the Word of God is flowing out of you, you will have the soundness of God. When I think of the Word, I think of honest, reliable, truth. The Word of God is truth. Hallelujah. The Word of God brings security to my life. The Word of God is perpetual. It's always there. It's coming to you. It's always alive within you. The Word of God brings assurance. Hallelujah. The Word of God is trustworthy. Nowadays, you're looking for people that is trustworthy. You have a vacancy, you ask people, are you trustworthy? They don't know because they waver. But the Word of God is consistent. And then the Word of God never waver. The Word of God is trustworthy. Does not lie. So today when you look around into a world, there's so much of hypocrisy, so much lies. People speaking lies. So you don't know how to trust people. Politicians, preachers, they all speak lies. Lies are around this world, and you don't know how to trust people. But I could tell you one thing. The Word of God is eternal, and because it's eternal, it's reliable. It's sung, and I can rely and put my trust in it. I can roll all my problems to the Word of God, hallelujah. And the Word of God will bring the truth of God alive to my life, hallelujah, hallelujah. So that is what I look at as integrity. Therefore, you are a Christian. You are saved by listening to the Word of God. Your salvation is based upon the Word of God. And your life, now that is transformed, it is transformed by the word of God that is written you. So you must be like God. Say, I must be like God. God created man in his image and his likeness. So since God created man in his image and his likeness, man supposed to be like God. But when Adam sinned, he lost the likeness of God. He lost the image of God. And so Adam now portrays what is in him. And what is in him, he produced into this world. So Adam 
instead of living by his spirit is now living by the soul, the mind. And that is the way people in this world is living. People live what they think and they do what they think. Our education system, our political system, they are all based upon reasoning of what we think. But the word of God, say the word of God, is peace on the spirit of God. The word of God is based upon God. The word of God is the true likeness of God. It's the holiness of God. It's reliable. It's sung. Hallelujah. Therefore, Jesus came into this world to save us and to transform us and to make us again, again, like God. So when he died on the cross, he took our self image and die with it but he produced and he raised in the image and true likeness of God he raised as a resurrected and glorified Christ he raised as God. And that glorified Christ is now living within me, within you, within everyone that accept Christ as Savior. That glorified Adam <laughs> is living within you. Hallelujah. The one who took our sins and took all our shortcomings as a man is now living as the glorified God within us. Hallelujah. So therefore, you have God within you. You have the likeness of God within you. You must be be like God. You must be what? Like God. Isn't that what the Bible says? You are God's? Yes. You are created in the image and likeness of God? Yes. And God wants it to be like that. But Adam lost when he sinned. But Jesus came as the last Adam to bring us back into, into the image of God. Hallelujah. So look at yourself now and say, and say, I am in the image of God. You must be like God. And what you say must have what integrity, soundness, reliability, and trustworthiness. Hallelujah. You must speak like God with integrity, with soundness, with reliability, and trustworthiness. I must look at you, Davin, and say she is a trust. Worthy person. I must look at, at Samuel and say he's a song man. And so is it because I see the likeness of God within them. When your words 
and character match up with God's own, then you will see the hand of God generating his power, his anointing, his love and grace through us. So when you have the word of God within you, when you have God character within you, you will see the power of God, the anointing of God, the love of God, the grace of God operating through your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you embrace the word of God, be on the lookout. Turn to your brother, your sister, give them a, a, a hunch. Or I'll say, give them a punch and say, look out, look out, look out. <laughs> what they are looking out for? What they are looking out for? The hand of God operating by his grace in and through your life. Because you now live by the word. You live by what? The word, the integrity of God. And so they see the hand of God operating within you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The psalmist, David, in Psalm 132, he said, I will worship towards your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and for your truth and faithfulness. How many of you love to worship the Lord? Let me see your hand. Hallelujah. Love to worship. Love to praise God. That's great. That's good. You have exalted. You have exalted above all else your name and word. Your name and your word you have exalted above everything. So in your practical experience as a child of God, you see the name of God lifted up. And you see the word of God being exalted. Hallelujah. So when we come to worship, we worship the Lord. And said, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides. Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Sidkani, and so forth. We said, Jehovah Shama, he's our peace. And the name of the Lord is tremendous, is great. And that is why the name of the Lord is exalted. What God say, the psalmist say, you have magnified your word above all your name. You have magnified what? Your word. Hallelujah. God has magnified his word above his name. God place emphasis on the word. That is why you are sitting here and you who are at home will join in later. You are listening to the word of God. Worship is great. Worship is good. Worship is wonderful, but God exalt 
his word. The name of God is powerful. But God magnified his word. The question is, are you living the word? Do you do what the word of God says? Have you exercised the ability or the obedience in the integrity of the word? The word of God is what God exalted. The word of God takes precedence over our worship. So I love Sister Becky. Don't you love her? Yes. I love she come to church and she worship and I join with her and I worship too. I love that. I love that. But then I see, I see, I see in the word that God exalt his name his word above his name. Whatever God says, he surrender to it. You know, the word of God is like the word of a king. Think of it in the days of the Bible when God, well, sorry, when the king made a petition that you should pray to none other but me. Daniel, obey the word of God and say, King, well, he didn't tell the king this. I won't bow down to you. I would pray. So when the petitions were made, you should bow down to no God but the king. Daniel opened his window and turned toward Jerusalem and prayed to Jehovah God and said, God exists exalted. They condemn him. They say, you didn't obey with the laws of the country. Why you say the laws of God? The word of God is made to be obedient. And he exercised his faith, his faith in the word of God. And they put him in prison. But the word of God delivered him out of the lion's mouth, out of uh, the very claws and teeth of the lions and deliver them and make them whole. So I say to you now, is there anything that you are doing in disobedience? Is there anything in your life you say, well, pastor, I cannot do this because my situation does not allow me to do it. I say, put your situation in the hands of God and obey God and obey his word first. And you will see his hand at work, his deliverance. Give the word of God precedent in your life, over your worship, over what you do in life. Give but God first his word and say, I'm doing your word. And God, God, God will honor his word in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love Jeremiah. Jeremiah said in 1 12, Then said the Lord to me, 
you have seen well. For I am alert, active, watching over my word to perform it. This is what God said to Jeremiah. I am watching over my word. I am actively watching over the word of my word. I'm alert. I know what I say. And what I say has soundness. And what I say, I will bring it to pass. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word remains. And the word of God remains active. And God will perform. Say, God will perform. God will perform his word in my life. God will perform his word today. God is going to do a thing in my life. The thing that I expect him to do according to his word. He will do it. And so when I live in obedience to the word of God, God is watching over my life. And so when my life do the word of God, God perform it. And God does miracles, wonders, healing, transformation, deliverance in your life. Hallelujah. The Lord is watching over his word. Now do not adjust the word of God to fit your lifestyle. You say, Pastor, I'm a country singer. So you're going to listen to country songs alone. You say, Pastor, I can't help it. I'm weak. I got stroke. I can't move my limbs. <coughs> so you will adjust yourself to that. You say, you love money, and pastor, I would take care of my money, so I would keep my money. No matter what your lifestyle is, don't believe your lifestyle or my lifestyle takes precedent over the word of God. My lifestyle has to come in line with the word of God. Do not adjust the word of God to fit your lifestyle. Rather, your lifestyle must adjust to fit the word of God. So since the word of God say, by his stripes I am healed, that is what I believe. Hallelujah. Since the word of God say, beloved, I wish above anything, I wish above anything, that thou may prosper and be good help, even as I so prosper, I believe the word of God. And I believe I will be a prosperous man. I believe God has made me prosperous. You're looking at David Joy here today. I am a prosperous man. Hallelujah. You see, 
He's talking fat. No, I'm speaking the word of God. Hallelujah. The word of God sees me prosperous. The word of God sees me healthy. The word of God sees me strong. Hallelujah. So I believe the word of God. I believe the word of God. And you believe the word of God for your life. Sam, what is it? That you desire in life. Make sure. Whatsoever you desire. Is of the word of God. And what you are doing. To embrace that thing. Is based upon the word of God. And your life. Is the, the written word of God. You are a living epistle, the Bible say. You are a living Bible. Hallelujah. Your life match up with the word of God. Hallelujah. If you choose to live a life of faith, it's, it must be done in the word of God. And according to his word, not outside of the word of God. If you say that you have faith, brother, pastor, look, I have faith. Well, show me, are you living like the word of God said? When you do not live according to the word of God, you are embarrassing yourself and you're putting down God. But when you live according to the word, you choose life. You choose spirit. You choose God. God will exalt that and make sure that everything in your life uh, will and um, will resemble or will be in the likeness of the word. Hallelujah. In Hebrews 10.38 before the author wrote the faith chapter chapter 11 he end chapter 10 with these words and then begin chapter 11. He said, and now the righteous or the just man shall live by what? By faith. Now the just shall live by faith. If anyone draws away or draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. If you say that you are a man of faith, you have to be a man of the word. If you say that you are a woman of faith, you have to be a woman of the word. The word of God takes precedent. And therefore, the righteous man lives by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word is food that nourishes our spirit and produces faith within us. So the word of God is the substance, say substance, substance. that you believe in. And that substance is the nourishment 
of your spirit man or your inner man. And that sustenance or the word of God produces faith in your life. Anything you accomplish in life depend on the amount of substance, power, and nourishment you have drawn from your source. Who is your source? God is your source. God is your source. So when you open your mouth to speak, you speak the word of God, the substance, the substance of God, which is the word. It is the power in your life. It is your, the nourishment within your life. It is what you draw from him. So anything I accomplish in life will depend on what I put in in my life. I put in the power of God. I put in the nourishment of God. And I will draw from that. Which is the word of God. Hallelujah. The substance in you. Determine. Determine. Determines the outcome of every situation. The substance in you will be determine the outcome of your life. What is your life like? It has to be like the Word of God. God say in Isaiah 55, 11, So will the words that come out of my mouth. It will not come back empty-handed. So God's word is spoken. God says, what I speak will not go empty, will not come back to me empty. So that means the word of God is like a container. When God speaks it, it goes forth. It will not come back empty. It will do the work I send it to do. They will complete the assignment I give them. The word of God completes the assignment that God sent it to do. You see, I'm called of God. I do the will of God. But show me your calling. And show me the will of God in your life. For the will of God is the word of God. And when God speaks it over your life, it will not come back empty. God intend to do something with you, Devine. God intends to do something with you, Angelica. God intends to do something in your life, Elaine. Yes, and God will do it according to his word. Not what I say, but according to his word. God will do something. And the word that God has spoken the word that God has spoken 
ogui of life will not return void. It will complete the ascendant for which it, it has gone forth for. So the word of God is working in me. Say that. The word of God is working within me. The word of God is working. I cannot see it. But the word of God right now is working in my life. Is working in the ministry. Is working on what I'm saying. The word of God is working. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It shall not return to me void. But it shall accomplish what I please. It shall prosper in the thing for which I send it. So God is doing a mighty work in you. And the word of God is working within you and will accomplish something in your life. The question, can you see that word? Working within you. Can you see it, Gary? He's working within me. The word of God is within me. The word of God is powerful. Powerful. You know, when I look around, I see a lot of negative things. But I see also the mighty hand of God is at work. And bring those negativities, those things that are doubt, that are fear, down. And bring in the will of God in my life. So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. That is why you need to be in church. That is why you need to study the word. That is why you need to spend time with the word of God. You can't say that you are a child of God and not reading the word of God. It means you're not in the likeness of God. When you don't Read the word of God. When you don't give the word of God first preference in your life, you're putting God down. You're making God inactive in your life. But when you activate the word of God within you, you activate God within you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes at the family devotion, I would ask my wife, my children, have you read the word of God? Which book are you reading? I want to see if they are active in the word. Well, you know, it did you say, Pastor? It should be, it should be them and God. But God made me. God made me the head of the home, the spiritual head, the shepherd to look after my family. So I ask them, are you reading the word of God? Ask Angelica, are you reading your Bible? Which book of the Bible are you reading? Ask Gary, are you studying the word? What topic are you studying? What God has impressed upon you lately? What is it that is going on in your life that is based 
upon the word of God. <coughs> Hallelujah. When you read the words, you find the faith of God that comes to you. Let the word of God produce faith. The force needed to do exploits in your heart. This is the foundation that you need for a life of exploits and signs and wonders. Faith is produced in your heart or your spirit, not your mind. Your mind is what the devil would use to work and bring all kind of thoughts to you. But your spirit, God occupies that. The person that is sealed, that is blood washed, that accepts Christ as his savior, his spirit, his spirit becomes active. And the word of God lives inside his spirit, not the mind. <clears throat> and when he moves according to the word of God, he moves in the spirit of God. And the mind and the thoughts have to comply with the word of God. The thing is, if you are actively involved in something right now, ask yourself the question, is it peace upon the word of God? What am I doing? Is this thing peace upon the word of God? Am I living in the word of God. Does my life. Resemble the word of God. Is my actions. Match up. With the integrity. Of the word of God. The faith of God. Is produced in your heart. In your spirit. At the entrance. Of the word of God. So the faith of God. Is produced. In your heart. In my heart. When the word. Of God. Enters. Your spirit. The spirit. Jesus said. Give life. The Spirit gives life. Hallelujah. The Spirit gives life. So, when you live according to the Word of God, live according to the Spirit of God. In John 6, 63, Jesus said, It is the Spirit who gives life the flesh? The flesh profits nothing. So that is why I say, listen to what you say. It is, is it of the flesh or is it of the spirit? What you are saying, does it match up with what God said? Of the flesh. The flesh will go to nothing, will be destroyed, but that which of the spirit will remain. Look at what you are doing right now. Is it word brace or flesh piece? Look at your actions, your daily life, and see it is is it word based 
arisit based upon the Spirit of God. Is what you are doing has the foundation of the Spirit. The words that I speak to you are spirit, they are life. What Jesus speaks is the word of God and he is the word of God. And what he speaks is spirit and life. So until my life is based and live by the integrity of the word of God, I am not fulfilling the word of God. So that brings me to the end of today's message. The integrity of the word of God. The integrity is spirit based. Is word of God based. And if you live a life of the word, if you live according to the spirit, if your actions and your spiritual actions are based upon the word, upon the Holy Spirit, you are doing good. But if what you are doing is carnal, is of the mind, you're not good doing good. So I say examine my life. Examine your life. And make adjustment. Make adjustment in my life. My life should be match up the word of God. I must adjust my life to the word of God. I must live the word of God and adjust my life to be like God, always. You see, I'm just human. <laughs> God didn't make you human. God make you in the likeness of God. Adam became human when he sinned. But all the time he was made to be like God. That does not mean you are God, you are almighty, you are like him. And so adjust your life to be like God. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, we have spoken your word. And let whatsoever is occurring in my life, in my friend's life, in everyone's life, come alive to be like you, so that we will bring your will into our life, your purpose, and your word will take preeminence in our life. I speak the word of God today. I speak the blessings of God. I speak your holiness, your purity. I, in Jesus' name, in the name of the Almighty One, I speak in Jesus' name, healing, deliverance, salvation, 
I speak provision to your people. I speak to the person that needs you and calling upon you. I said, touch him or her and let your blessing flow within them. Flow within them. Let the anointing of God now be released to touch lives, touch hearts. Bring the people alive. Bring the body, bring the thoughts alive with the word of God. And let faith come alive. We believe you, God. We trust you and believe you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you real good. So I want you to remember, internet, it's not working at this time. But the word of God will come to you recorded and delivered to you before the day is out. So this word is coming to you. So God bless you and this is your friend, Pastor David. Saying I love you and God bless you. See you next.